All right, chapter 7.1, slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form looks like this. Y equals mx plus b. m is your slope, and b is what is called your y-intercept. How does that work? Well, if we have a graph of uh, y equals 2 thirds x minus 4, minus 4 is my y-intercept, and that's kind of where I start on the y-axis at minus 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and I put a point. Next thing I have is 2 thirds, which is my slope. The number in front of x, which is m, is always your slope. And your slope is rise over run, so I go up 2 over 1, 2, 3. Up 2 over 1, 2, 3, and I can use that slope to draw a straight line. So start with your y-intercept, plot your y-intercept on your y-axis. Next thing you have to do is take your slope and use your slope to find other points. If it's positive, it goes up. Remember, if, it neg if it's negative, it goes down. Next thing you have to be able to do is to switch between, um, this is what's called, well, it's almost in call, uh, standard form, which is next chapter, and we need to change it to slope-intercept form. So it's just a bit of algebra. Sorry. Um, what you have to do first is get rid of the 3x. You want y on its own. So I minus the 3x from both sides, minus 3x. Notice that above, though, it's y equals mx plus b. So your x term, it's actually better to have that term first. So I would write the negative 3x in front of the 5. The y is what's left. So I have y equals negative 3x plus 5. <clears throat> and that's it. Once you have your y on its own, you're done. This one here is going to be a little more uh, difficult because I have a number in front of the y. Same step though, first of all I subtract off the 4x, subtract off the 4x, I subtract it to get rid of it, and I'm going to put the minus 4x in front of the 6 because your x term should always go first in slope-intercept form. So on this side I'm left with the whole thing, negative 2y, negative 2y is equal to negative 4x plus 6. Be careful with that because the 6 is positive, it's plus. Next thing I have to do to solve for y is divide by a negative 2, and I have to divide everything by negative 2. Everything. Okay, so those 2's are gone. So I'm left with just y equals negative 4 divided by negative 2 is a 2, positive, and 6 divided by negative 2, 2 is a negative 3. So I'm left with y equals 2x minus 3. So if you're, given a, if you're given a question in this form here, it's easy to change it to, well, relatively easy to change it to slope-intercept form, and then you can graph that. Your y-intercept is negative 3. Your slope, in this case, if it's a whole number, always put your whole numbers over 1. Just like this one, put the whole number over 1, so that you know that your rise is negative 3 over 1. In this case, rise is 2, run of 1. So if it's a whole number, make sure you put it over 1 to remind yourself. All right, almost done. What is the slope and y-intercept of each graph? Okay, first thing you want to do is you want to find points on your graph. So if it's hard to find, oh, there's a point there, and there's a point up there that I have. Okay, so if it's if it's relatively easy to find, you should be able to find do the slope. Uh, not too bad. So go with the rise, which is one, two, three. Okay, I'm going up three, and then I'm going over. One, two, three, so let's write that down. So rise over run. I'm going up three over one, two, three, four, five, six. Over six. Okay. The y intercept is right here. So two things you need for the slope intercept form, right? The slope and the y intercept is at one. So for this one, and I could reduce that to, sorry, the slope I could reduce to one half. So for the form y equals mx plus b, my m is one half and my b is one. Remember, b is your y-intercept. So I just plug those values in. y equals one half x plus one. Okay. So I look at this one. It doesn't quite go, but if I extended the line down, I, could, I should see that it actually goes through this point right here. Uh, 1, 2, 3 at negative 3. My slope, again, pick two points that you can see. 
I see a point up there, and I also see a point right here. Right? You can be close together as long as they intersect at a definite point. One, two, three, and negative three. Okay, so for this one, my slope, which is m, is going to be the rise, which is 1, 2 over 1. But this time it's sloping downwards, so I know it's got to be negative. Sloping downwards, make sure you have a negative slope. Or you just know that it's going down and then over, so down is negative, over is positive. My y-intercept, or my b, it goes through negative 3 down there. So I plug my information into y equals mx plus b. And I just substitute those values in. y is equal to negative 2 over 1, x, don't forget the x, minus 3. All right, last question. What is the value of m or b? So they give you an equation, they leave b as b, or they leave m as m, and they give you a point. So you just have to substitute the point in for x and for y and solve for the missing variable. So in this case, I plug the 2 into y, so I get 2 equals 2 bracket, my x becomes 5, plus b. Now I just solve for b. So my next step is to multiply the 2 and the 5, which is 10, plus b. Next step is to subtract the 10 from both sides. So 2 minus 10 is negative 8, and that's my b value. And I'm done. You could then write this equation. You could say, oh, so now the equation is y equals 2x minus 8, right? Because you have the equation now. Second one, again, I have x and y, and I just plug these points into x and y. So my y is negative 2. m I'm trying to solve for. My, m, or my x is 1 minus 3. Negative 2, m times 1 is just 1m minus 3. And now I have to get rid of, rid of the 3, so I add it to both sides. So I get m is equal to 1. And again, you could write the form, you could write the equation for this now, right? Y equals 1x minus 3. And if you're asking, well, what's the slope? Remember to put the slope over 1. So it's got a rise of 1, run of 1. It doesn't mean your slope is 0. It means you've got a rise of 1 and a run of 1. So you could, you could graph this based on your y-intercept and go from there.